Emmy was like family. Now we pass talking. Then maybe you just have to find out. What's going on to all my movie fans out there? And welcome back to the channel. We are back discussing a new Creed movie. That's right, Creed 3 coming to theaters next week. Your boy got a chance to see it early in theaters. And I'm so excited to be here with you all because I'm a fan of this franchise. So we're going to be talking about the good and the bad. I'm going to give you my score to film. And by the end of this video, I'm going to let you all know if Creed 3 is worth seeing in theaters. We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler free review. But before we get into it, let's start the conversation in the comments below let me know number one if you're a fan of the rocky slash creed films and if you were excited for this new movie and of course once you've seen creed 3 let's talk about it what worked for you all what didn't work let's talk about the writing the direction the performances and if you've seen all three creed movies where would you rank this one amongst the others let's have those conversations below and of course if you all enjoyed my review today consider hitting that thumbs up as well as sharing this video with that being said let's talk about michael b jordan and his direction now after after being in front of the camera since he was 12 years old and having the opportunity to pick in the brains of all the various directors he's worked with in movies and shows, this marks his directorial debut. And I gotta say, man, I was pretty impressed by Mr. Michael B. Jordan's direction and his directing sensibilities. Now, he's kind of sort of following the footsteps of Sylvester Stallone in a sense of we know Stallone directed five of the Rocky films, and obviously this is Michael B. Jordan directing the Creed film. And the way Michael captures this new side of Adonis, to me, we've never seen this. And I really appreciated seeing him because if you followed the franchise, you know he didn't grow up with Apollo. So we get to see Donnie as a full-time father, a full-time husband, and him approaching this back half of his boxing career. And what comes with that is this new level of maturity, a new level of responsibilities. And after seeing this film, I'm confident in saying to you all, I would be excited to see another Michael B. Jordan directed film. Now, there were some shortcomings that we'll talk about a little bit later, but overall, I was pretty impressed by his direction and kind of sticking, and, and I would love to see, by the way, I would love to see him direct maybe another Creed film or maybe a spinoff to the Rocky Creed franchise, but going to his performance, I'm going to be honest with you all, this to me wasn't my favorite performance as he plays Adonis, but again, I come to appreciate seeing this new side of him, the more reserved side he's not as arrogant or as cocky or as reactionary as we've seen him in the previous films it was to me a nice contrast a nice change of pace and I really appreciated this new element of him and again his performance and his direction was pretty solid across the board so switching gears and talking about one of the more fundamental things that I like about the Rocky movies and now the Creed films is how important the family is and sticking to family in preparation I rewatched Creed 1 and 2 and I really enjoy seeing this progression of the relationship between Donnie and Bianca and Marianne and now throwing their daughter in the mix and going back to Bianca played by Tessa Thompson she means to Donnie is what Adrian meant to Rocky and no disrespect to Adrian because she's so integral to those films and to Rocky in the family and the life they built together but I personally feel Bianca has just a little bit more to do in the films than what Adrian did and she's kind of able to separate herself from just kind of being that role of a wife and we get to see that with her her career as a musician and we see that within this film and Tessa to me does a really good job of checking Donnie at times in this movie especially when she's learning new things about his past and has this strong presence throughout the film and also sticking to the family conversation the young girl who plays their daughter to me did a really good job because this film explores a plot line that was introduced in Creed 2 where they just had the newborn baby there might be some issues with her hearing and we get to see the results of that in this film and I thought that they handled that pretty well but transitioning to a mother that we or someone a tv mother that i grew up with i know a lot of you all probably grew up with her as well i'm talking about felicia rashad as marianne creed who definitely has more to do this time around compared to her second film as well as i would say she probably has more to do in this one than the first one as we get to see her in this film her and donnie we've always seen this dynamic where donnie really appreciated her taking him in as a son but we've never really seen her perspective of the situation so in this film without giving too much way I appreciated being able to see this time around how important Adonis was to her and what that meant to her life and they share a really good touching moment in this film but lastly y'all as far as performances I gotta talk about my favorite performance and that is Jonathan Majors who's having a hell of a year so far and him as Damien who comes in from Donnie's past and he has a hell of a ship on his shoulder this man's presence was definitely filled from the first 
first time you see him on screen and throughout the duration of this movie, Jonathan does such a great job of making you understand his side of the story and you see where this hatred stems from and this pain, this suffering from within and it actually shows in his fighting style within the ring. Now, I know there's been some early conversations about this might be the best Rocky villain of all time. It's debatable, but I'm not going as far as saying that, but I will say as far as the Creed films go, oh yeah, without a shot of a doubt, he is the best villain within this Creed franchise, and he reminds you, like I said, we can sympathize with his character, but he reminds you he is a terrible person sometimes. He does some dirty things in this film to kind of get him in a certain position, and also I got to talk about how much I love this West Coast swagger that he brought to Dame. He definitely has that juice in this film, y'all, so if you're a Jonathan Majors fan, and he's a hell of an actor and he does a really good job in this movie as Damien. So a couple of last points before we get to my criticisms. As far as the story goes, it's pretty straightforward as we come to know with these Rocky films slash Creed films. But I really enjoyed exploring the themes in this movie. For example, your past, even though it was important to you at that time, it doesn't have to necessarily be in your present or in your future. We also get to tackle more of the themes of family secrets. This is very important in this film. We also get to tackle these themes of broken people and broken relationships relationships and finding the lessons within your trauma and moving past your trauma and learning from them for the betterment of yourself and others and not allowing your hate to shape your life or life decisions as we see with the Dame character. So I thought the themes were really strong and a couple more things I want to mention. The soundtrack's fires, a lot of West Coast vibes from Dr. Dre, Nipsey Hussle, and I can't leave without mentioning the fight sequences, which were pretty amazing in this film, and the way that Michael B. Jordan decided to handle it. Creatively speaking, it took me a little bit to get used to, but once I got used to it, I thought they were just some of the best fight sequences we've seen in this entire franchise, and just seeing the way Michael captured it, the way he did a good job of displaying the brutality and the force within the ring, especially when we get the fight between Dame and Donnie Adonis, might be my favorite fight in the entire Creed franchise. So those are my main positives. Switching gears and talking about my criticisms with this film, I will say first thing first, the first half of the film to me felt a bit off in the pacing. It was a bit slow. I'm gonna be honest with you all. I felt like obviously we have to catch up with what's going on with Creed since the last time we saw him. We gotta establish this relationship between him and Dame and the whole family dynamic. And I and I appreciate all that stuff. But again, the first 30, 35 minutes were very slow as far as the pacing of this film, which also brings me to when we transition into the film gets better as it goes on, but there is a very important emotional beat that takes place in the second half of the film. And I felt, if I'm being honest with you all, I felt that emotional element in the film was rushed. It kind of was glanced over. Things happen pretty quick. And when it comes to sticking and landing, I don't feel like they did so because we go by this scene, which is so big for our main character. It actually ties directly into one of my other big criticisms, and that is feeling the lack of Rocky in this movie. Now, without getting to the weeds, if you all do not know, there is a lot of behind the scenes drama involving Sylvester Stallone and the whole story of him and the ownership of Rocky and his relationship with the producer, Erwin Winkler. And again, there's a whole public conversation about that. And if you all have followed the franchise, to me, Creed 2 did a good enough job of establishing the scene where we see Creed after fighting Victor we have a moment where Rocky says to him, it's your time now, kid, right? And that to me was like him passing the mantle on to Michael B. Jordan to carry this franchise of Creed. But I'm not going to lie, I felt his presence not being there in this film. And there's two scenes and there's two kind of particular elements in this film. I'm not going to spoil it here, but I'll just say this. There is a moment in the film that I felt like Rocky was needed. One goes hand in hand with that emotional moment that I was just talking about, how I felt that that element was rushed. I'll just say... You would have thought that it would have at least been a phone call. I'll just say a phone call was needed in that scene. And also, I love Wood Harris. I mean, you talk about above the rim. Remember the Titans paid in full. And I really like him as Duke in these films. But seeing Duke ringside with Adonis, seeing Duke with the training montage with Adonis, trying to motivate him. I feel like Rocky just, Rocky did it better. I'm just being honest with you all. So again, I don't think the lack of Rocky hurts the film and hurts the narrative, but it was just two scenes in particular 
the emotional moment, I'm like, Rocky definitely would have been there. And then again, I, I appreciate Duke and I appreciate Wood Harris, but I think that Rocky just kind of fits better within that motivational side of Adonis within this film. So last thing I want to talk about, there are some off-screen developments that we don't get to see in this film. I'm more focusing on the boxing perspective and the boxing career of Adonis. He accomplishes certain things that I wish I would have been able to see between Creed 2 and 3. And then even focusing on the Dame character, he, the way he's able to position himself in this film happens pretty quickly. So again, that goes back to some of the pacing and some of the directional choices and creative choices that I wasn't a big fan of. But last thing I want to talk about, Michael B. Jordan. I talked about him a little bit early. And I, again, I was pretty, pretty solid performance, especially in the second and third act. Once you get to see him get more engaged in the story, him and Dame have to have their beef. That's to me where Michael really kind of excels in this role. But some parts in the first half, I felt like he was kind of going through the motions. I felt like he was kind of formulaic in his role as Adonis. It was kind of stale in his performance. And I don't know if this is to be true. I would love to talk to Michael B. Jordan about this as far as that transition from an actor turned director and directing yourself and want to be there for your other actors. I wonder if there was some sense of I need to be the director to, to, for the betterment of this film, for the betterment of these actors. And I feel like you felt that in the first half because he was kind of, he was in the film. Obviously, he's the lead of the film, but I feel like his performance was kind of hindered from him being the director. And it might have taken away from some of those lackluster moments that I felt in that first half. So those are my main pros. Those are my main cons. Before I give you all my overall score and let you know if this film is worth checking out in theaters, if you stuck around to this point in the review, I appreciate you. Just a friendly reminder, if you're enjoying yourself and you appreciate my comments, Commentary. Consider hitting the thumbs up, sharing this video, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Overall, Creed 3 to me has become one of my favorite trilogies in the last decade. This film is able to continue the tradition of how important family is, fighting your demons, facing your past, continuing the traditions of the legacy of Creed and what that name means to him at this point of his career. Yes, there were some pacing issues that I had, some character developments I would have seen on screen, and I do feel like Rocky was missed, but overall, y'all, after walking out of the theater, I was sitting in around a three out of five, but now thinking about it, sitting on a little bit more, I'm confident in giving Creed 3 a 3.5 out of five. And to answer that question I posed up top, is this worth seeing in theaters? Hell yes. And seeing it on the biggest screen possible, especially seeing those fight sequences on the big screen was something worth checking out by itself. But again, overall, 3.5 out of 5, and you should buy your tickets to see Creed 3. So go ahead and now, this is where you guys interact with the video. Once you've seen the film, pros, cons, what worked, what didn't work, favorite moments, least favorite moments, thoughts on the performances, the direction. Did you feel the lack of Rocky in this film? Let's talk about that. And also, speaking of Rocky, I might make a short video or maybe even a longer video just kind of talking more about those scenes that I didn't want to spoil here as far as where I think Rocky would have been perfectly suited in this movie. So keep an eye out for that. And also, I'm going to probably make a video ranking the three Creed films. So go ahead and share your rankings, share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this review. Further reminder before we wrap this thing up, to hit that thumbs up, share this review, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hope you all enjoyed today's review. Hope you're staying safe. As you all can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out my other reviews from this year so far. Check out my most recent breakdown and we'll catch you all on the next video.